Yeah, I'm not doing any marketing here. Right. Out of ten, go around. So, yeah, I'll let me. This is Dan Atkins, he's from JFDI Consulting, and they got the enviable task of making Microsoft SharePoint more fun to use. So, and with that, I think I'll let you okay. see if it's possible. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm Dan Atkins, I'm Principal Designer at JFDI Consulting. Um, Pete's right, I'm kind of representing the uh, corporate world, as it were. Has anyone who here has actually used SharePoint or has to use SharePoint? <laughs> okay, so it can be a pretty painful product. Um, in our experience, we have done many intranets, big and small, um, from 30 people to 3,000, 10,000 user base. And the challenge has always been the same to engage those that have to use it. Um, and for those that don't have to use it, try and get them on it in the first place because it still is a place that the employer wants you to go to. Um, you have to work within. So, um, yeah, bear with me. There's some marketing <laughs> pattern to get through and then I've got a, a video walkthrough at the end that is gonna really show it in action. Um, so, good. Uh, we're a Microsoft Gold partner and um, we've been in internet development and automation for many years. Uh, we created this gamified platform which can guide a user through a defined onboarding process um, and we hope to introduce users to an incentive regime around gamifying the workplace. Um, onboarding can be that critical first step to gamification. So some of the background to this product uh, came from a training requirement that a, a customer gave us. They wanted a way for their SharePoint admin team to cherry pick content throughout a deployed area of the SharePoint internet and be able to put forward a, a training program. Um, so we've since developed that on to include gamification and leveling up, etc. So, um, on this next slide, you may be aware of Contoso. Microsoft used Contoso quite a lot. Uh, so, intranets are not the same as websites. We've realised that. Um, users will create content, collaborate with colleagues, perhaps follow a defined business workflow or consume the latest published company news. Uh, the intention being to strengthen connections between people and those systems that we must use. Um, to inform, has always been the root cause for a company to operate an internet for staff, evolving over time to incorporate document management in almost any other line of business application. To instruct a user based on how to use the company internet is essential for a successful adoption. And we have many, many failed cases to uh, showcase that you know, if you don't address the adoption of your internet, it's pretty much doomed to fail. Um, you end up just using it as a bulletin board, pretty much. Um, through targeted knowledge transfer, though, you can help to guide them along the business procedure. That's where this product has come from, as I explained. Our onboarding product can achieve this ideal, including catering for the more experienced users on an opt-in basis. Hopefully you'll see how that works. Maybe we've got an advanced user level that someone's achieved. <coughs> Perhaps that person that is already well over favour with SharePoint would want to jump in at that level. Um, and hopefully the company has put forward incentives to do so that once you have achieved the level and therefore achieve the reward. So the, the content is important to users. Um, what their daily tasks on how far on board they are with a specific business critical system, we've been able to produce a product capable of delivering what is relevant to any audience. Utilising analytics and dashboard technology to empower users by our goals and achievements is key, helping to get that information they need fast. As you can see, we've got an advanced user level here. Uh, it is common to position internets as a hub of integration between many systems. I think we're well aware of that. Onboarding 
is a seamless way to guide them through those facilities with a gamified incentive to do so. Measuring participation and engagement via the tracking of user journeys, infer user behaviour and efficiency by observing common metrics collected for each participating user. Sorry about the blur. So, um, as an intrinsic and extrinsic reward system, um, onboarding will also inspire and motivate the staff, we hope. Uh, balancing these two kinds of rewards are pretty tricky. Um, we, we try to encourage to consider the use of challenges, games and difficulty levels. Um, successful implementations involve levelling up to get harder challenges. Um, also facilitating facilitating a mechanism to offer praise from colleagues. Okay. Um, that's the end, pretty much. Um, what I've got here is hopefully the video will... That's it. <coughs> <coughs> So this is fairly early on in the development of gamifying this, this training tool effectively. So um, what we've got here is we've got a presence in SharePoint that effectively brings up your own personal panel that you saw in one of the early stages. And you saw that in a, in a more advanced state where you've actually got a user already succeeding, uh, achieving some awards and some milestones as well. Essentially, we've animated in order to draw the attention to this, um, this dialogue. And this particular user who was identified as a new user when they came onto this area of SharePoint, and it can cross the entire farm as well. It's, it's site collection is where it's deployed to, but its scope is farm wide. Um, so automatically, it will pick up on any, any new user. You'll start as a new user, you'll get the ability to uh, be drawn to these information or uh, a part of a process, and now we're at step three of a process. Um, what this video isn't showing is how easy it is as an admin person to this onboarding facility to, as I explained earlier, cherry pick elements, HTML elements on the page and then apply a step process or an individually targeted tip, helpful tip of information. This individual's just completed the four steps of the uh, beginner level and then moved on to being an intermediate. And here we've got a couple of singly targeted tips. We can deliver video messages, audio, all, all kinds of media within these tips. And that will go full screen as well if you click on the full screen button. So this is now talking about the achievements and analytics part of the process and you've got a, an award shelf down here that when you, um, the next step after this that's explaining that you can have ghosted tips, so if you kind of ghost it out, you can um, hide these tips as an end user or show them. So if you want to refresh a course effectively, you'll be able to reveal those ghosted tips again for you. So from an admin perspective, you want those kind of seemingly targeting tips to be the areas of the system that actually uh, people tend to ignore, to draw their attention to. Um, maybe you want a video to show how to upload multiple files to a document library. Um, so this is saying that you know, you've got milestones to the right and you've got awards to the left. If you hover over those milestones, <laughs> I should have done that. Um, yeah, okay. You can probably fast forward. <laughs> nice. That's good. Is it playing? It's not playing. Okay. Uh, okay. 
think it's that, eh? a bit further. So hopefully we're about to drill through <laughs> to the dashboard uh, where you can actually see the achievements. Okay, so it's going to illustrate hiding those ghosted targeted tips and then bring them back and then we'll drill through to the dashboard. Um, so you can reset your icon visits as well. So at any level you're able to roll back to the beginning of that level. So this video is only showing up to four or so tips per level, but that might be an entire uh, document management system that you're trying to onboard people to, to your show, a video how to upload multiple files or your show, key areas of the system. So here's a dashboard. Um, earlier on in the slides you've seen how this dashboard has evolved. We've now got um, an area where uh, this area here that actually drives some incentives. Um, I think it was £200 in the next payday and or at lunch on the company in the next, whenever you want it. And as an admin person to onboarding, you actually get to toggle for global stats. So what we're doing is we're aggregating all of the trace data that we're, we're collecting those user journeys on, and we're actually then gonna present that back to the admin people to go and show it off to the business owners. You get to be able to share your achievements, um, or not, or just print out the certificates if you are a company that wants to you know, say that you've achieved a certain mm -hmm. level of internal training. Mm -hmm. So here we've got nine steps within the intermediate area. Do you have any statistics to say how much uh, improvement, <coughs> improvement in uh, reading or doing the documents? if you use gamification, is it? Uh, does that make any sense? Uh, unfortunately not, not from uh, the entire customer base. Uh, what we're trying to do though is we're trying to make this as, as granular and as flexible as possible for the, the admin person for the tool, um, where you might want a productivity weighting applied to some of the level achievements. So you can infer that this user is 80% productive within document management or within a given area. So we're, we're trying to make it as flexible as possible. It's a shame that I can't show you the, the editor panel. So when you um, are an onboarding editor, this, this expands a little bit and you can show the editor. The editor comes down as, as like the ribbon does within SharePoint and you're able to um, mm -hmm. pick an element. Uh, so you say you're going to select a target and then anywhere on the page you can click and it, it pulls in all of the HTML elements so, so that you can successfully target that. And then you can say it's a simple tip or a media type tip and you just build up the story as you go. So you don't have to sit there with a SharePoint list, you can. There's a SharePoint list in the background that drives all of this. You actually use the front end to build up the training program. The gamification elements from the perspective of this tool is really just to draw the people in to want to be trained on the system. As I said, intranets fail because they don't get introduced uh, correctly into the user. Cool. Any questions? Yes. Do you think that there'd be any scope for sort of um, integrating this with official Microsoft training at some point where it's just I work in IT and I've used SharePoint mm -hmm. I've been through like in all the IT organisations I've worked in I've been through so many internal training programmes and it just becomes like this sort of like never ending cycle of going through training programmes and having nothing to show for it at the end yeah. and if you're a printed certificate it's like well that doesn't mean anything to another employer no. whereas I love to go through a system like this and be able to say I've got an open badge at the end of it and display it on my Mozilla. Platform. Yeah, so the intention here is we use personalization uh, to get your awards, your um, awards and incentives if the company allow them to be shared mm -hmm. to go to your Dell site. And you, oh, cool. So your, your public profile from a SharePoint perspective lists your onboarding achievements. 
Um, and it's our intention to really have this tool um, be driven by the end users, really. So uh, once you've got your SharePoint scoped, delivered, live, um, there can be a person or a team of people just creating the training on the fly and allowing end users to subscribe to that training. And you, it's in your control to achieve it as a way. It's not to say that the managers won't pick up on it and want to incentivize you further by insisting that you achieve this for a different type of goal. That's it. Well, one, one question, just like looking, um, or just kind of looking further ahead. So, if you um, if you took this as being um, for millennials and the way that millennials interact with software, do you think that things like SharePoint are the right way for millennials to? to be in business, to, to use software to help them uh, gain efficiencies in business? I think it definitely will where you fail to do so already. So I think um, we, we get the impression from some customers, even the large corporates out there, that to provide a, an onboarding regime for this new thing that's the internet, or even a new area of the internet, where an internet's been well established already. I think something like this just helps ease that processing by empowering the end user to actually decide at what level they want to jump in at. Will actually, um, through inferred analytics, I hope, show the powers that be that you, know, you have got a mixed bag of skill set here and you should be providing uh, ways in which for your user base to jump in and out of rather than, look, you're all going on a training exercise next week and it's going to take you out of your day job for a whole day. Uh, I, get, I guess the kind of way that um, so, so I was kind of looking at it and thinking that's why looking at the future is that um, what, you, what we do here currently is we try to train the user. Should we not, with the power of technology, be training the software? So. If you looked at that the other way around, what is the best way that I want to learn? Um, that enables me to learn in that way, um, rather than kind of making me have to think outside of the box because I will probably not necessarily think, I don't, not in this way, and that, that, don't get me wrong, it's not a, a reflection on your, soft, uh, your, your software overlay, but it's, it's just that kind of thinking of like, shouldn't it be, when is the time going to be when the software is learned? Because we, we talk about AI um, and we talk about the integration of, um, you know, we talk about the integration of um, uh, processing power that's going to be so powerful that the human brain is going to cost like a thousand dollars in a few years time, something to, to, to recreate. And yet we are still trying to train ourselves rather than train the computer. When, when, did, when do you think that change will happen? So I think it's, it's naturally happening to the, the newer generation anyway. I think yeah, with the way in which we're introduced to new apps leads you through the learning process that you must go through. Um, it would be lovely to be able to turn that data back on the software itself to improve the software. It's a very interesting concept. Um, when that would happen, I don't know. Mm. Uh, I think something like this could certainly collect enough information to suggest that this area of your system is yeah. failing. Yeah. However, this area, an awful lot of people are being drawn to it and the productivity weighting is pretty much bang on. Um, whereas people don't seem to get this bit and the analytics suggest that. So you're kind of getting that already. You kind of could, yeah. 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 Um, what we're trying to do is position this product primarily to the end user perspective because you've got to feel like you, you want to adopt it. And we want to kind of drive the incentives from the company perspective as well. Um, but absolutely, it could produce a report back to the company to say that this area of your software could do with improvement. I'd also think that by adopting this software, when it comes to your next piece that you're going to bolt onto SharePoint, 
you're probably going to look at it in a very different way. You're not going to come at it from the onboarding process mm. as well as what functionality you're trying to deliver. Good question. Well, yeah. I think uh, the point of gamification is, of course, we're trying to change people's behaviours. Whereas the AI, you are saying, well, let's not worry about the people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you get rid of gamification, so thanks. Sorry. <laughs> Just a thought. <laughs> but, but it's happening, because I use a thing called TheGrid, mm -hmm. so which is a website that self-learns from how people are using it and visiting it, right. and then tweaks it. So I've got a message on my phone at the moment that says, we've redesigned your website for you today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I have a look to see if it's any good. Well done. Yeah. Yeah.